had your pension pot today, what would you do with it? Uh, put it in property. In property? Yeah. And the last question is, what do you think of the pension industry? Uh, convoluted. And what do you think of the pension industry? Uh, I think it needs reform. And what could you think they could do to improve it? Uh, keep it consistent for about 20 years. But in one of their papers, quite interesting, they produced a report which was a real life um, piece of data and research looking at um, in a consumption frame versus an investment frame. So if you position an annuity in a consumption frame versus an investment frame, what is more popular? Of course it's going to be consumption because they're looking at what they're going to be spending throughout their retirement. But actually positioned as an investment point of view, it's not that popular. <coughs> so what does this say to us? Well, we need to understand biases. We need to understand decision making. We need to understand preferences. We need to get under the bonnet, if you like, of how people are making decisions. Context is key when we're looking at product design, when we're looking at consumption, when we're looking at purchase context and social and cultural issues. So all this and more will be part of a bit of research paper that we're going to be producing in May, June this year with our friends from AXA, Octopus and Investec. And that paper will be available, which will cover all this and more, and it will be downloaded on our website. Well, because the freedom of choices aren't necessarily going to be available on all pension products, so some people will have to transfer from one pension to another in order to access them. So people get really fed up with that. A very long majority is the culture in this country is still to find benefit schemes. Um, and the quote I love in the middle is, you know, in this world, we know about defined benefits, we know about defined contributions. But this quote in the middle, this chap, had a pension, running up to his retirement age, expecting to get his pension, and then all of a sudden his administrator said to him, do you want to buy an annuity? Guidance does not provide a definitive course of action. There's been quite a lot in the press saying, are people going to be disappointed? Well, we've been doing it for 31 years, and we have very high customer satisfaction as long as you, know, you manage people's expectations. And I quite often hear Alan saying, you know, you might need to make two or three calls after you finish with me, but at least you know why you're making the call. And I think that really sums up what guidance is, is about. Then when they do have the appointment, and this is important from the scams perspective, uh, which I'll mention later, is we will call them. So the whole of the process is you start the process off. So when you know one of these scam outfits phone up and say to one of your clients, oh, can I, um, I'm just phoning you up for the government um, guidance service, that's not right. Our concern is that, that that issue on the demand side, which has been, has been kind of noted by the regulator um, in the past for, for annuity sales, uh, our concern is let's make sure that that same problem doesn't recur with the drawdown market going forward. Let's do everything we can to try and make sure things work better in future. Mm -hmm. Most people think that in general terms, in the abstract, um, consumers having more choice, more freedom when they repro uh, approach retirement is a good thing. Um, we all think that um, what a good outcome is um, will vary for every individual and uh, you know, it's a very individual choice because it depends on so many different factors and we think it's really important to have a proper framework in place to assess how the reform's going. But the numbers he came back with were that if you bought yourself a Lamborghini, particularly a, one, of the, one of the better ones apparently, you'd have to buy the taxman a Porsche in order to do that. Pension freedoms, can we handle it? It's really what I'm titling this and, and the conversation that uh, Chris and I were having uh, when we were on, a, on, a, on, a, on an event together last year was what can we learn from experiences in other parts of the world? Well, the South African uh, uh, department brought in a 20% cap initially, so you couldn't take more than 20% per annum. This would be on your, um, this would be on each anniversary, so the annual anniversary of, of the policy. But so that would protect you from yourselves because you know we want to give you freedom, but we want to protect you from doing something stupid and taking it all out at, all at once. Okay, but we want to make sure that we still get our tax revenues, so we'll make sure that you have to take a minimum of five percent out every year. With regards to the types of solutions, the wonderful thing about pensions liberalisation is that you can now meet multiple. Uh, multiple needs within, within one pot. There's not one size fits all. And I'm sorry, but there's no silver bullet. You know, over 20 years' experience in South Africa, there's not one size fits all solution. It doesn't exist. Human beings are individual. Everyone needs to dial up and dial down the, uh, the, 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 the sort of importance of these various components within their drawdown plan accordingly. 
But the wonderful thing about this is, is that if you do have financial discipline and you do have a good financial advisor, your secure income needs can be taken care of. Before I joined, I thought it was 100, 150. It's 14,000 is the average VCT uh, check we receive. The reality is, and I'm always at pains to point this out, Client investing and writing a cheque today for an EIS will probably not get their hands on that money for four years, maybe even longer in some circumstances. So if you tell your client it's a three-year hold and they come back to you on the 12th of March 2018 for their money, you're going to have an unhappy client. It's more a four-year hold than a three-year-hold. So there's not the differential on term that looks, you know, that looks like on the face of it. Chris used a great analogy earlier, which is IKEA. I mean, I've, I've done the whole IKEA thing, you know, lovely wardrobe in the bedroom. My kind of question is, if you could walk into IKEA, though, and it was just a load of random parts all spread around in the shop, how many customers would shop there? Not, not meant, this is interactive, by the way. If I ask a question, I expect an answer. That's the way it kind of works, because I guess you have the same thing with me. Um, I think not many. Uh, and when I get home with my IKEA pack, What's the first thing that I do? What's the first thing you do, Chris? I look at the instructions. I get the instructions out. And because I'm a bit analytical, the next thing I do is open that packet full of stuff and I make sure and I count every single one to make sure it's there and I then get the tools that it tells me that I need. And luckily enough, every time I've walked away with a proper wardrobe or something, how many clients would engage with that type of thing if we didn't give them a framework with it within to work and the component parts that they need to actually pull it together to produce the right result. So giving them all these choices is great, but if they can't actually have some guidance and know how to get to the end game, they're never going to start on the journey of building a wardrobe. I don't know what's going to happen after April 2015. I've no idea whatsoever. We've talked about customer behaviour, we've talked about lots of different things, but if there's one thing I've learned in 25 years doing this, so now I can say this is the biggest change in a generation, is that there is now as queer as folk. And uh, there was a study recently, um, if anyone can tell me, there was a group of Turkish actuaries, and children born today are going to live to what age? 100, 100 and how many? 105, very 135. Three scenarios, very quickly, cat drawdown, is, is what we kind of use today, but is it sustainable? And we've played around with it so many times, mm -hmm. a lot of clients are confused. Is it 120? Is it 150? 150 of what? Oh, the GAD rate? I'm not sure I understand that. Well, it's linked to annuities. Why is it an annuity then? It's all a bit confusing. Here to give you a perspective from the customer's <laughs> point of view about this incredible pensions revolution. Do not underestimate saving money at, you know, if you've got a lot and you're lucky enough in your 50s and 60s to have accrued quite a lot of money. Think about sharing that money if you don't need to spend it right now and you then don't spend it before you pass away with your family. It can pass on as a pension. And this removal of that huge penalty for anyone who actually had money left in their pension when they did pass away suddenly means you can rethink everything you used to think about pensions. Scams will come along and entice people to give them money. That's happening all day, every day in financial markets already. That's nothing new, it's just that there'll be perhaps more people and more money for them to target. And that is a big challenge to the government and the regulators and they have not so far done enough about it. There's an election coming up and I would suggest that you urge your clients to put as much money as they can into pensions now because it's most likely that some form of clampdown will happen for the high end. So if you've got somebody who's got plenty of money and can carry back some of the unused or carry forward some of the unused reliefs from the past, that might be a good opportunity to put it in now. I don't think that the, uh, whatever new government comes in will sweep away the absolute flexibilities, but they'll perhaps say you can't put as much money in or perhaps re restrict tax relief. Why are you not putting the same level of effort into trying to shut down scammed companies, scam websites for example? We spent a lot of time looking at how people are working outside of the scope of FCA regulation. But part of what we need at the FCA is the intelligence from people who see them when they're working on the field. The fees are paid by 
employers, therefore they can get into liability-driven investment strategies, etc., de-risking and so on. And I really struggle with the fact is we end up with this market being price capped when we're really talking about short-term home to release a bit of money within a tax efficient manner. The idea of mass market drawdown has many different connotations. If it's the, the kind of product where you just want it to stay invested for the long run, that's different from a, a mass market drawdown where you were describing people just want to keep taking the money out.